Hey guys, it's Kristen Cooper, your mortgage gal. Just wanted to jump on here. There was a recent article that came out that I wanted to kind of walk through and address. I've had some questions about it. And so I figured it'd be best to record this video and send the information out to everybody. So Realtor.com had um, sent out this article saying that renting beats buying. And so I really wanted to kind of talk through this article and look through the information because they're leaving out a lot of important things that you have to consider when buying a home. So I just, I'm always transparent. I want you to see the data and see the real numbers so that you could see uh, what that looks like. So we're going to walk through some information here. One thing that I pulled is just kind of specific to this area. I want you to see them gathering the actual data. And so this is just kind of in, um, you know, this area that we're going to be exploring, which Fair Oaks, which is where I live. So I use this as an area. If you were to rent a three bedroom home, what that would look like. So you can see it ranges from, you know, 26 to $3,600 a month for rent. So as we go through this information, uh, we're going to be talking through, should I buy or should I rent? And what does that look like? And what data needs to be considered when making this decision? So what we're pulling in here in the data is showing for, um, you know, Fair Oaks area, assuming a home, we'll just say 530,000, um, that we, what we'd be looking at. Now I'm showing you this because this is what all the data supports and that's bringing in and all the forecasted historical appreciation. And then we're going to talk about a little bit more conservative numbers, just so you could see even using conservative numbers, what that looks like. So what you're looking at here is um, showing this area. It shows here kind of what the trajectory of forecasted appreciation is. So the forecasted uh, appreciation that we're looking at is an average of 5.98 per year. Now you say, well, how is that possible? Well, keep in mind when interest rates come down, more buyers in the market and where buyers are in the market, it drives up prices, right? So that's why we're going to continue to see appreciation. You can see over here to the right that actually a lot would you know, say that the um, historical appreciation actually supports higher numbers um, over here, 5, 10, and then in a 63 year term. Remember, owning a home is a long term investment. And so it's a long term strategy to you know take the average appreciation. You're going to sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. And so looking at all the data to support what it's been is really important, as you can see what it's been over the, the years here. Um, and then this just kind of shows you the area, the medium home, uh, home income, which is actually pretty good. And then this shows you, you know, the demographic age range for the area. Um, most first time home buyers are somewhere in the low 30 range. Hopefully you'd be lucky enough to start buying younger, which would be great. Um, but that's what the data supports. Um, then you can see that, that we still have a lot of people that are renting that can actually afford to purchase right now. And so really that's what we're looking at is, can you afford to purchase? If so, does it make sense for you to be able to buy? So let's go ahead and just dive into these numbers here. And again, we're going to be using the article information to kind of see what they're saying and what the reality is that we're looking at. So we're, we're showing here in this graph, assuming that you know, you're renting for $3,000 a month. What we have to take into account, which the article is not taking into account, is that there is an annual rental increase with rents. Now, if you take the blended rate for rents, it does show that it is increased, which means rent prices overall are going higher. So what does that look like if you're renting today for $3,000? And then this is assuming you have maybe homeowner's insurance for, I just used a conservative number of 50 bucks a month. What does that look like for rent in year nine? Well, as you can see here, this shows you in the graph. Purple is rent. So yes, your rent today is going to be lower than your mortgage in this scenario. But at what point does rent become higher? Because that rent continues to increase where your mortgage usually is not going to increase. So when you look at these numbers here, you can see that it actually catches up. You know, you're, you're looking here at these years that it catches up. But keep in mind, this is assuming that you're keeping the current mortgage at the higher interest rate for the entire term. In reality, when inflation is coming down and when we're in a recession, all of those point to lower interest rates. So when interest rates get become lower, you're actually going to be at a lower mortgage payment than what rent would continue to increase. Because again, you're still going to have your rent increase. But at some point when you get a different mortgage with the lower rate, you still paid for the price of the home at a lower price point. That doesn't change. You bought the home for what you bought it for. But when you get to rewrite the mortgage, we pay off the current one, get you a new, new one, which is known as refinancing, you're actually going to hit a mark sooner than what's here. But let's just look at you have to stay in this mortgage long term, right? So you could see here that you're starting to even out because rent continues to increase in the later years, which this report that they're putting out 
doesn't include that. They're just looking at this moment right now. What does that look like? And that's not how wealth accumulation works. So this is assuming if you were to buy what you'd be looking at for your payment. And this is based on a $530,000 purchase price, 10% down. We're taking into account um, in this uh, in these numbers, um, purchasing the home at 530 with 10% down today. Um, and then you would see here your estimated property taxes, home insurance, and then your total monthly expense. So sure, if you're only paying $3,050 today for rent, and you are going to be purchasing a home today, your mortgage will be higher initially, um, which buying a home is an investment. You have a return on that investment. You have no return on rent. Um, it's 100% um, a debt, no, no uh, wealth that you're accumulating from it. This is assuming a 7.25 rate, which is actually worse than what the article said. Article was using a number of 7%, so I'm being even more conservative in this. And assuming a 4.5 rent increase, which again, the article is not taken into account, but is a reality. So sure, initially your cash flow is going to be negative, meaning you're going to have to pay more to purchase a home in this market than you could probably find a home to rent, right? That's just the reality of it. But you have to take it a step further and look at what does that look like down the road? So what you're going to be looking at, obviously, down the road is going to be what's the return, so an um, amortization gain means that, and we're looking here at a nine-year snapshot. So an amortization gain means in nine years, you've paid down your loan balance, which is your amortization, which is now called your equity. So whatever you pay down in your loan is now your money that's in your home. It's your net worth. It's your equity. So this shows you that if you purchase a home in nine years, you gain 56451 just in the amortization of what you paid down your loan balance doesn't even take into account appreciation, which is how much your value goes up. So again, if we say equity is the amount of your current value minus what you owe, as your home appreciates, that means you have more equity, which is your money, which is your net worth in your home. And so that's another factor to consider. So even if you didn't have amortization, saying the home didn't appreciate, you would still pay down your loan balance, which is your equity that you don't have when renting. So your amortization gain in nine years, you can see here 56,000. Assuming, and I put in here a, for, a forecasted, I made this a custom appreciation of 3.9%. As we saw on the real estate report card, the appreciation actually expected to be much higher than that. But I'm playing, I'm I'm just saying let's be conservative. So when we be conservative and we look at the numbers and we use 3.9% as the appreciation. Look at your estimated value over nine years. You bought the home for 530,000. Now your home is worth 747,852. So now that is your form of appreciation. That's an additional 217,000 that you wouldn't have gained had you been renting because you have no stake, no equity when you're renting a home. So then if we take it down and say, okay, well, that's great, but you know, I want to I want to sell my home in the future and there's costs to sell. Sure, let's take that into account. Let's say that nine years, based on a value of 747, you sell and you have to pay, let's say, six percent to sell the home. That's forty four, forty five thousand dollars that we have to deduct from your net worth, your equity that you would have. And then we take into account a tax benefit. Now, keep in mind, you need to talk with your tax professional to see what tax advantages you may or may not have. If it's a married couple, 22% tax bracket, then that means that you have a tax benefit over the nine years, meaning a write-off of 22,000. Um, I'm gonna also show you without a tax write-off what that would look like. But your net gain by buying a home in nine years, all things considered, is 193,000. So then I pose the question, if you're paying $3,000 a month for rent, right? So you're paying 3,000 times 12, $36,000 a year for nine years, that's $324,000 that you paid in rent with no return versus how much you gain. What would you do with an extra $193,000 in nine years? Move up to another home, move out of state, retire, help your kids through college. Definitely a huge part in wealth strategy. Now, if you're not getting the tax benefit, I always like to show you actual data, you can see that obviously your, your net gain goes down by the tax benefit because you don't have that tax benefit. But again, you may and tax changes are always changing. But you're looking at a huge gain. So when you're looking at these articles, or you're seeing things come up that says that rent's better than owning, you got to look at all the numbers. They're not doing justice by providing you information that's not valid. 
Now, of course, there are some people that just can't afford to buy in the market. Totally understand that. And as soon as that you put yourself in a position to be able to buy, I encourage you to do so. Reach out to me. I'd be happy to go through a home buying plan to help get you on that path to home ownership. It is the number one wealth strategy for Americans, for you to be able to create and accumulate wealth. You already need a house. You're just doing an additional investment that gives you a huge return. Again, rent, you get no return. So please, if you have questions or you want to dive through the data specifically to you, I want to make sure you have all the facts and the information in order for you to make an educated decision, which is why I'm putting this video out there to kind of go over their article and the things that they're missing here. But would love to be your advisor. If you have any questions, please reach out so that I can get you the correct information moving forward.